This is Twit. Project Tango has been Google's experimental technology that uses specialized sensors on the phone to merge virtual elements with real-world elements on screen. First, we heard of Project Tango was 2014 as an experimental prototype phone dubbed the Peanut. It was kind of cute, but a little bulky. Followed later that year by a 7-inch tablet that was sold as part of the Tango Dev Kit. Lenovo f uh, released the first consumer Tango device last year, the Lenovo uh, Fab 2 Pro, and it was really, like, huge. So it wasn't didn't feel super mainstream. And now the Asus Zenfone AR is hoping to take Tango uh, even more mainstream. I just got it delivered this afternoon. I've got it in this box and figured, you know, what's the fun of, like, opening a box on my own. I, I, mm -hmm. I can't open these things if, if, you know, you guys aren't watching or yeah. if you aren't sitting next to me, right. like if why? You, if you open a box and no one's uh, recording it, <laughs> it, are you opening the box at no, all? No, you're I not, Megan. That. You're not at all. So, so we got this. So basically the Zenfone AR is, uh, is Asus's take on taking Project Tango and kind of the promise of Google's flavor of, of augmented reality and taking it, a like I said, a little bit more mainstream. So what you end up with is a phone that actually looks like any other phone, right? Like it's super thin on, on Tango devices in the past. It, the sensors on the back and everything, it just felt huge and bulky and big. And I got to say, this is a really nice uh, thin, thin build. What's going is on it, on the back there? Well, this is, <laughs> this is the plastic. This is the fun no, part I mean, of a box. How many cameras is that? Oh, yeah. Okay. So the Asus, uh, so they call it the TriCam uh, system. So you've got a 23 megapixel rear facing camera for high, resolu uh, high resolution detail of everything that the camera sees, really high res. That also helps for identifying objects for, uh, for tracking, too. You've got a motion tracking camera that's using a fisheye lens. Uh, for tracking your, your motion through space, obviously, and then depth sensing camera uh, using IR infrared uh, projector for measuring distances between items. So basically what Tango is doing is it's taking all those three data sets, those data points that are generated through those three cameras, and kind of combining them to have kind of a highly accurate map of of your surroundings of the room and where the phone is in space in relation to all of the objects that are there. So you could take it to a Lord concert, per se, and then record from many different angles? You know me so well, <laughs> Megan. I would take this to the Lord concert, even though I couldn't even tell you a single Lord song. But yes, you could totally do that. <laughs> uh, and, you know, another thing that they're, they're also talking about on this is uh, storing map information of spaces and possibly sharing that with other Tango devices for mapping areas or in stores and, uh, you know, to help you, like if you go into a hardware store and you have a hard time finding where, where the, uh, I don't know, the screwdrivers are, potentially you could use your phone to navigate through there. Mm. And just like you would out in the street, uh, navigate, you can navigate through, uh, through the stores. So I noticed there are bezels there, even though we're moving towards a bezel -less society. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, the side bezels aren't that bad, but yes, you've got top and bottom bezels, fingerprint reader down yeah, the there. Side is that, is not, that a fingerprint reader? Actually, I don't even know that that is a fingerprint reader. Um, uh, yeah, so anyways. Burke wants us to skip to the good part, which is how much uh, it costs, which I would say is not the good part, but the bad part. It's $600. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it is $600 for the 64 gig, uh, 64 gigs of internal storage, 6 gigs of RAM. So it's got a lot of RAM, $699 for 128 gigs, eight gigs of RAM. So, I mean, I think price-wise it's on par with a lot of Android, kind of premium Android devices. If, yeah, you know, right, right, right around there, it's, it's pretty on par. I think that the big detractor, the big downside to something like this is that, well, okay, I guess the upside is that Project Tango for AR uh, is a lot more, I would say, exact, precise than AR, than what we know about AR kit, or at least it, it should be more precise. The, the extra sensors on here are give a little bit more information, a little bit more data than um, the iPhone's uh, dual camera setup, mm -hmm. right? That can provide a piece of it, but that's not all that you're getting here. But I think the downside is someone really has to be intent, like it has to be their intention mm -hmm. that they want to get in on Project Tango and then can convince themselves that that it's worth it to them enough to buy a phone specifically dedicated to that. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that's going to do in the marketplace. Right. I don't know how that's going to that work out over right. time. And so I do wonder if the iPhone 8 will have better, even better capabilities than the iPhone 7 for, um, for recording. Mm -hmm. 
we don't know yet. Um, but I, I, I think this is great for developers and it's great for like super technical Android users who want the newest cool thing. Um, but I don't know that anyone else, a regu any other regular people would buy it. I mean, they, they're always pushing the, like, redecorating your home for AR. Like, here's where you'd place your chair, and here's where you would put the couch and that painting on the wall. But, in, I mean, how many times are you going to redo your home? I mean, hopefully not once every couple of years, or else you might have a problem. Just saying. Yeah, no, that's that's a really good point. I mean, I think that's, whoa. Okay, Was so take my now? camera for a second. Did you, are you already ARing? So I, I skipped through. So basically, it's mapped the table, you can see, right? Those are all the points of the table. Ooh, there's my And hand. it's starting to oh. give me things on the table. <gasps> oh, but I don't see the table. Well, I just see a unicorn or something. Well, it life. took, well, <laughs> the, the space that it mapped is what you're seeing on the ground there. It basically did a 3D map of the table, and off the edge is where you see all that stuff in the background coming out of. So, if we had cut to it a little bit earlier, you would have oh. seen kind of like the the 3D mapping mm -hmm. that was that was taking place. But can you uh, start it over? I don't know if I can start it over, but it's a beautiful scene, isn't it? We've got yeah. I'll do the exit and see what it does. Maybe it'll take us somewhere <gasps> fun. Oh no! Oh. I exited it at the wrong time. Okay, okay. So now it's and now we're back to normal. Okay. Um, but anyways, that's kind of a part of it. You saw it there at the very beginning. Um, part of what t is interesting, I feel like, about Tango is that it really, it starts it starts with a mode to where you have to basically learn your space. You move it around and it realizes there's a wall right there and there's a table right here and off the edge of the table, there's chairs over there. And so it can map elements to those particular things. So what you saw there was a grassy scene that was based on the map of this table and off the edge, you saw the stuff coming out of the background. Um, and, and there are other elements of AR that actually do camera pass through so that you see the stuff like you were mm -hmm. expecting to see, you see the table and then you see something dancing on top of it. Now I just, I just installed and launched this. So that's pretty impressive. You saw him taking the plastic off. It's for real. Yeah. Um, so was that just a demo? Like what was it that you clicked that started that? It, it just did that right when I fired it up and oh. I, I just launched the app. There's a Tango app on it. And so it says discover Tango and maybe it'll do it again here. If I launch it again, you can kind of see it uh, go through, but there's a Snapdragon 821 uh, processor inside. It says walk to explore. Yeah. So there's me. There you are. Oh, it's mapping me. Yeah. It's mapping feels. you. See, and as I move it around, it draws more pieces of the space, right? It's, detecting all that stuff and there was a there's our unicorn yeah, with two there's horns our wonderful unicorn and <laughs> once you have enough uh, of the space mapped then it kind of realizes the space and gives you the experience Ooh. like that whoa pretty neat uh i will be very curious to play around with this uh and and see if it's worth the money verizon will actually be the exclusive carrier partner so if you wanted to if you were holding out for the carrier experience to be like, oh, well, this will never fly because you won't find any carriers, you will in Verizon uh, if you, if this is uh, sounds like your cup of tea. And so, you know, uh, I will probably be doing a little bit more of a deep dive on it tomorrow and all about Android. And I think not this weekend, but next weekend, I'll be reviewing it for new screensavers. Uh, but new technology, I've been really looking forward to this, so I'm super excited to play around with it.